Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. If there's one subject we've all heard a lot about, it's climate change. This afternoon we're going to learn about some of the basics of climate change or global warming and we're going to discuss some of the climate changes occurring in our region. Joining me are Dave Kestenbaum of the University of Vermont Extension and Alex Geller of the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Dave, climate change is kind of a touchy subject to some people. You're not here to change anybody's mind. We're just talking about some of the facts. No, Alex and I are not here to try to change anyone's mind or convince them. Uh, for me, I really find the science speaks for itself, and most folks don't need much convincing at all. Um, much like the science behind smoking has linked smoking with cancer, mm -hmm. the science behind climate change has done a very good job about linking um, human activities to increase levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere to a warming climate. What Alex and I are here to talk about today are some of the documented impacts of climate change we've seen in Vermont, some of the basics behind the science of climate change, as well as some of the adaptation strategies we as Vermonters can embrace in order to deal with the realities of a changing climate. Well, can you tell us a little bit of the background as to why scientists and researchers are concerned about climate change? Believe it or not, as far back as 1896, there was a researcher studying the ice ages, mm -hmm. and he speculated that lower levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere may have caused a cooling planet and induced the ice ages. Mm -hmm. Well, then fast forward to around 1938, um, there was another group of scientists, and they speculated that, well, we as humans be are beginning to burn la large quantities of fossil fuel and these fossil fuels are putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. They wondered that us as humans might alter the ecosystem, increase levels of CO2 in the atmosphere, and that might in turn cause the planet to warm. In the 1970s and 80s, well, researchers began to see those large-scale increases of CO2 in the atmosphere and began to notice a warming climate. Well, that put a lot of people um, concerned a lot of people, I would mm -hmm. say, and um, including governments from around the world. And that sparked a whole uh, rush on folks trying to gather more data and information on climate change. And there were thousands upon thousands of scientific studies that incurred. Um, well, what, those studies really began to draw a stronger link. And the most famous of those studies is the Intergovernmental Panels on Climate Change Report, which was released in 2007. Mm -hmm. What that report shows is that warming of the climate is unequivocal. And uh, it's predicted that if warming persists, these changes are going to put the health and safety of billions of people around the planet at risk. This was an interesting report in the fact that it was a compilation of hundreds of reports from scientists from around the globe. Well, there's some important numbers in the climate change discussion as we show. We have a, a slide that explains the numbers under atmospheric carbon. Sure. Um, at the top of this slide, you notice there's, there are three numbers. Mm -hmm. The first number is 280, the next number is 319, and the final number is 392.5. Those numbers represent the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in parts per million. Mm -hmm. The first number, the 290, 280, is from 1750. And that final number, the 392.5, is from today. You notice that's a pretty drastic increase of over 100 parts per million. It shows a trend of more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over time through the Industrial Revolution, when people are using more fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. um, most scientists agree that we need to stabilize greenhouse gases at 350 to 450 parts per million in order to avoid the catastrophic impacts of climate change. What that means is we might be over, over the threshold already, mm -hmm. and we have some pretty serious work to do in order to bring ourselves back from that threshold. If we can take a look at that um, still again, there's also another sort of graphic in the corner that you might want to explain that um, we can take a look at, maybe. Alex, do you want to take that? <laughs> yes, I will. Um, so as Dave just explained, mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a relationship between the concentration of CO2, carbon dioxide, in mm -hmm. our atmosphere and uh, the rise in uh, global temperatures. So this relationship can be explained by what's called the greenhouse gas effect. Mm -hmm. now, with the greenhouse gas effect, you have the sun and it's emitting rays. Uh, or energy that enter our atmosphere. And as these rays enter our atmosphere, 
uh, they hit the contents inside uh, and they heat it, much as in a greenhouse where you have sun that enters the greenhouse wall through the glass and heats the contents. Um, however, in a greenhouse, uh, when it becomes too warm, you can open a vent or turn on the fan to regulate that temperature. Um, unfortunately, in our atmosphere, we don't have a CO2 trap door, and it's the CO2 that's in fact trapping uh, this energy in our atmosphere. Um, making matters worse, uh, we keep pumping more CO2 into our atmosphere, and we're doing it faster than the forests can uh, convert this CO2 uh, and soak it up. Uh, so the result of this is seen in a warmer climate, and you can uh, liken the, the increase in CO2 to a thicker glass wall in that greenhouse. So ultimately, what we'll see, and what we already are seeing, is a global rise in temperature. Mm -hmm. And so people often confuse climate change in the terms of weather and climate, and there's an important difference. Yeah, there is. So um, weather um, is a short-term event, and if we can show that slide, mm -hmm. um, we, we can see that there's a, there's a good picture showing an individual snowstorm. This could be a snowstorm, this could be um, a rain event, um, or something like that, but the, the key is is that it's short term. Uh, climate is long term, and as you can see in the uh, picture to the right, um, there's a man measuring the annual snow depth, and so this is an average, and it's taken over many years or uh, and combined. Mm -hmm. um, but the best analogy I've come across so far comes from a sixth grader, and he says when you wake up in the morning and you look outside, uh, you decide what you want to put on for the day. That's the weather. Um, however, when you go to the store and you buy your wardrobe, you buy clothes for your wardrobe, you're, you're dressing or buying clothes for the climate. Interesting. Now, you brought along another slide that shows two different scenarios. Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, the first scenario, well, I'll start off by saying um, right now our, our energy sector is very fossil fuel intensive mm -hmm. and fossil fuels such as um, natural gas or coal, uh, they emit a lot of CO2. Um, and also our lifestyle is, is that of uh, a personal lifestyle, and individual transportation. Um, and so if we take that first scenario and we look at the map, um, we'll find that um, in 50 years, uh, Vermont's climate could um, increase in temperature by about three degrees, and that translate to, translates to current day uh, West Virginia. And if we extend that 100 years, we might end up in Georgia. Um, so if we change the way we do things, if we rely more on renewable energies and we change our habits to more of a collective culture where we use public transportation, then we might change things. And that projection is a second case scenario on that slide. Mm -hmm. And uh, that shows uh, after 50 years, we might only end up in Pennsylvania type weather and uh, West Virginia after 100 years. But there's also the potential in 100 years, we could reduce CO2 emissions so much that we might actually, uh, we have the possibility of restoring our climate to current day Vermont. Now Dave, some of the impacts or measurements of climate change can already be, be shown in Vermont. What are they? Sure. Um, from uh, the period of 1976 to 2005, a study was done on the Champlain Valley. And within the Champlain Valley, we saw a 2.1 degree uh, Fahrenheit increase in temperature. We saw um, a three inch uh, increase in precipitation from rain and snowfall from the previous 80 year period. Uh, we've also seen uh, later icing of the lake and less icing of the lake throughout the whole season. Mm -hmm. Other impacts also include uh, a shorter maple sugaring season, um, as well as even earlier blooms of certain flowers uh, on each year. Um, the big takeaway picture is what we have seen over the last 30 years in the Champlain Valley is a warmer climate and a wetter climate. And this is also seen by a one foot increase in average lake level at the King Street Ferry Dock from 1976 to 2005. Oh. And some of the data from the past 30 years and scientists are able to make some predictions about our future. What do we have in store? Sure, it continues that trend. Folks are looking at a warmer, weather, wetter climate uh, with more extreme storm events. One scientist I know described it as global weather weirdness, <laughs> where sort of those regular patterns of the past might not occur 
uh, you know, as we have known them. Right. Uh, in the Champlain Valley, what folks are predicting is a 1 to 11 degree increase in temperature, um, a 10 to 15 percent increase in precipitation, which translates into about four to um, six inches more precipitation falling in sn as snow and rain, but a greater percentage of that precipitation falling as a rain. What that might mean for Vermonters is that, uh, well, we're going to be need to prepare for these more extreme weather events. And what kind of other impacts will that have? I mean, even things sure. like crops and such. Sure. As far as crops go, a farmer uh, will have to start planting crops that will adapt to a warm, warmer weather, a longer growing season, and would be more resilient to deal with maybe flash flooding or long periods of rain, long dry spells, those extreme weather events. Mm -hmm. um, we actually might lose our maple forests, which means that Vermont might not be able to produce maple syrup. Our forest type might change to the type of forest that you see in uh, southern Appalachia. And so, Alex, what, people are going to be want, watching this and wondering what they can do, and, and how much are Vermonters admitting? Well, um, the Agency of Natural Resources has actually conducted uh, an inventory of our greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, in 2008, we emitted uh, 8.4 million metric tons of CO2 uh, into our atmosphere. Um, and if you break this down, we're looking at about 14 metric tons per capita. And this comes in various forms, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's transportation, electricity generation, agriculture, home heating fuel, those types of things. And so where do the bulk of our emissions come from? Well, so the bulk of our emissions, if you, uh, if you bring up the slide, uh, the bulk of our emissions come from a uh, transportation sector. And this is the case largely because our energy sector is uh, so clean. Uh, we rely heavily on uh, Hydro-Quebec, as many people know. And also, um, we've had uh, Vermont Yankee, which doesn't um, emit any CO2. So. <clears throat> This uh, shifts the, the focus to our transportation sector, and we live in a very rural state. So as such, uh, a lot of the populace in our state lives far from major thoroughfares, so they can't access uh, public transportation and such. And so the, the second biggest contributor, though, is heating. Yeah, so we live in a, one of the colder states, right. obviously, and uh, so we, we do rely on heating our homes uh, a lot. Um, and, uh, a lot of the problem in that is is that we use oil and natural gas and uh, propane to heat our homes, and those are all fossil fuels and oil carbon intensive. Mm -hmm. Uh, overall, though, Vermonters are doing a pretty good job reducing greenhouse gases? Uh, yeah. So in, in 2008, uh, we actually, uh, Vermonters emitted 40% less CO2 uh, than your average American. And uh, since 2004, we've been reducing our greenhouse gases. And so, um, you touched on um, mitigation and adaptation. What do those terms mean? Dave? Sure. Adaptation. Adaptation is really about planning for the future. Mm -hmm. Adapting to Vermont uh, that's warmer. Mitigation. Mitigation is about us as a society collectively making a shift to try to minimize the impacts of climate change. An example of uh, mitigation might be Vermont setting a goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 80 percent. Uh, and then us as Vermonters taking steps such as moving away from fuel oil to heat our homes well, or insulating our homes so they're more efficient. Watching about how much we drive. Uh, really living a lower impact lifestyle. And what people do individually can make a difference? Sure. What each of us do collectively. A step as simple as changing the incandescent bulb in your home to a compact fluorescent or an LED light will increase the efficiency of uh, how you light your home by 80 to 95 percent. And those small steps make a difference. And where can viewers get more information? Uh, sure. Um, the state of Vermont has the Vermont Climate Change website, and they can go to www.vtclimatechange.us. Mm -hmm. I know this. we talked about a lot of big issues, but I think it's, it's as important to sort of bring it all back down to an individual contribution can make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, too, um, you know, we talk about gasoline. Driving smaller cars would help. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really should only buy a car that's as big as you need. Um, it's, uh, it's very important to pay attention to that fuel economy figure. All right, well, I want to thank both of you for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.